Hello and welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop Streamed, your one stop for co-op news and playthroughs. And today we are playing through Enchanters. So, this is a game by a company I would not have expected, Mythic Games. I guess Mythic symbol's not even on here, though. Here it's, uh, Jindy? Gindy? That's what I was saying. I think another company made it and they worked huh. out some kind of deal. So Mythic was part of the recent Kickstarter that's the copy of the game I have where it's like everything all together. I mean, this is definitely not a Mythic game. When I think of Mythic, I think of Mythic Battles Pantheon. Now there are Mythic Battles Ragnarok, which is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc. Yeah, big miniatures, Solomon heavy games. games. Now, this has a similar theme, though, right? You know, you've got fantasy things. You're attacking, you're defending, you're killing dragons. So, I mean, that's very mythic-y of them. But, um, you know, not the uh, definitely not the, uh, the miniatures portion of it. But I did it again. I didn't introduce you guys, so I'm going to do it simultaneously again. So Mike's, or not Mike's, Jerry's trolling doesn't work. So, hey, everybody, I'm here with Mike and Jerry. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I'm happy to be playing this one. Uh, I showed it to Peter and Jerry last week. We actually played with... Uh, Jeremy Hemp, uh, we, Howard. We, yeah, we played with Jeremy Howard from uh, Man vs. Meeple. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was competitive. So now I'm teaching uh, Jerry and Peter the cooperative mode. I'm still waiting for Jerry to say hi. I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting on it. I hear it coming. <laughs> Call me Tim. Call me <laughs> Tim. Well, I tried to call Jeremy, Jeremy Hammond, which was somebody I went to high school with. Had nothing to do with Jeremy Howard at all. Uh, so this is interesting. Do we start with stuff? I. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, well, yeah, I mean, let, let me kind of get into the basics for anybody watching. Yep. So Enchanters is kind of like a drafting game. And normally you're trying to get the most victory points by the end. And the big thing is this uh, journey row of adventuring cards. So underneath each space where these six cards are, you'll see a number of, those are gems, if you can see them. So it goes from zero to five. And basically on your turn, it's very simple. You just like pick one of those cards, pay as many gems, as many crystals as are under the space you picked. If it's a item or an enchantment, items have a little anvil symbol on the left, like the horn or the ax. Um, then it'll go on top of your item pile. If it's an enchantment, which is like all the ones that say of something and have a little eyeball on the right, it goes on top of your enchantment pile. So here, here I'll come over to my, or here, I'll go to your player board. Okay. So what you do is for each pile, you'll be stacking cards up, but you'll leave the little like banner at the bottom of each card visible. And many cards will give you different abilities, and you'll also cover up abilities. So, for example, while uh, Peter has this horn, first of all, it's worth two victory points forever. That's what the bottom part of this means. And he can still use the ability from his uh, starting Wood Elf banner. We're playing with the banners and classes uh, optional expansion that gives you, like, cooler stuff to oh, start. Oh, so I'm an assassin? Sweet! Apparently, for at least a little while. Um, but then, like, the horn's ability up here, which lets Peter get crystals when he rests. Basically, on your turn, you either take one of those cards, you journey, or you rest with the X. Uh, he gets some crystals for every attack. But the second that he covers that up, let's say that he got the X on his next turn. You don't see that. Search points, but he can't use that ability anymore. You broke up. Repeat Sorry, that. I was going to say, uh, you can't use that ability yeah, yeah, he can't use that ability anymore because it's uh, covered, but he can still use anything on the bottom of the card. Jerry, your hand is and, right in the middle. And then for the uh, for the axe, uh, the most important icons are blue shields and red swords. Those give you attack and defense to fight monsters, because you not only journey to get these items and enchantments, you also journey to fight monsters. And uh, the big thing is, if they're on the top, like the axe, it's going to get covered up the next time you get another item, so that defense will go away. But if it's on the bottom, like the axe, you would have like a permanent attack bonus, basically, even if you get other items on top of it. And enchantments work the exact same way. You just have two piles going at once. And it does have kind of a goofy humor if you want to. Not only do they have the name, so right now Peter has the Axe of Assassins, is what he has enchanted. But um, also they have flavor text. So if you combine it, it's Ask all right. an engraving of all your Mark's names so that you don't forget. All right, so for those of you who missed it, which is everyone because couldn't hear Mike, so he was saying that the flavor text c combines too. 
So if you read the axe one, it says ask for the or ask the proper question with the axe that has engraved all of your marks names so that you don't forget. So the the flavor text combines too. That's pretty cool. I did not know that the first time we played. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's hard on digital, but in person, it's like a, it's fun. Like we when I play with my son, we just kind of take turns like reading them. Um, so eventually, monsters will come out. Let me show a monster from another set. You want to grab another set, Peterson? Send it whenever I grab things. I grab worse lag. There oh, you go. You that's go. a monster on top. So bring that guy. Yeah. So yeah, I'm zoomed in. So this is a cultist of evil. Let's say that he. Well, here I'll bring him down. Let's see that he was like in this space of where the of ice is. If we wanted to journey to him, if we wanted to journey to him, we could spend two crystals again as our entire turn. But instead of getting him, we would fight him. You must have swords attack value at least equal to their hearts. Or the town over here, it says on the left, it says multi-action two crystal equals one sword. You can as many times as needed spend two crystals to get an extra sword and all you need to do is equal their heart value, and then you can kill them. But then they retaliate and attack back. The claw value is how much damage they do, but every one of your shields it cancels it. For every damage left, you take a wound. Okay? Pretty easy. Yep, and then uh, these cards will go in your third pile, which also has the exact same thing where you cover people... What does that I moved it down oh. here to the third okay. pile. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you'll cover things up. So for right, uh, and the the down arrow, which is most common on monsters, is an immediate effect when you gain that card. So here you would take a wound and give it to another. Player. Um, wounds are what you take when you can't deal with all the claws. So if Peter had like zero shield and killed the cultist, he would take one wound from the cultist. And those now, are in typically the worth game, negative one victory point at the yes. end. Yes, exactly. I was going to say in the competitive game, it's negative one victory points. In the uh, co-op game, you're coming to this card up here, Peter. Uh, we have 40 life total? Game. Yeah, so this is normal difficulty. We have 40 wounds between us. Um, if we ever take a grand total of 40 wounds, we immediately lose. That is our loss condition. We also lose if we go through the entire action deck without defeating the boss. Uh, we win if we can defeat the boss, which is this friendly guy over here. Now, how does that work as far as... Do we each have our own individual wounds as well as the group? So, like, yes. can you only heal your own wounds? So we do have to track it in our individual bowls still. But also, uh, we can decide if we want to do this. You can make the game harder by using uh, wound cards, which uh, you take a wound card whenever you get up to 10 wounds. And basically, it counts as still being the 10 wounds, but you also get, like, an ongoing negative effect or something. Um, oh, and uh, we got Benicleaf on again. Benicleaf, good to see you. There, uh, Benicleaf asked if we ever stream D&D. We do play D&D together. Uh, I've DM'd for us, and Jerry has as well. Um, but it's it's been a while. No, we've we've never streamed uh, any RPG stuff. Although I definitely like RPGs. Yeah, last time we did it was we used Fantasy Grounds, but we did not stream it. I wouldn't mind doing a one-off. I don't know that I would well, mind I got, to make I got it a, a, a regular thing. And I wouldn't yeah, mind doing. I mean, you know, I mean, RPGs are okay. cooperative by nature, right? So I mean, I well, think that fits. Yeah, it. I don't know. That that's. I, I would not say that's an automatic thing. You, you, it depends on how oppositional the game master is. If they're like literally just trying to kill you, which some game masters are, I don't know if it's well, very cooperation. That's, cooperation. that's not fun. Well, I agree. <laughs> so, so none of us are. So, yes, the answer is yes. Asking because you guys have great interactive chemistry seems like D and D might be interesting to watch. Well, yes, and we yell at each other too. It is when when uh, Peter just randomly kills the NPC that he was supposed <laughs> to talk to. <laughs> oh my gosh, Peter is a mer hobo of the uh, oh my God, highest yeah, order. He... He kills everybody. Um, I do. So there's another symbol here we didn't talk about, and we'll get to it when we see it, I guess. But there's like a broken shield. So this actually, even though it's of regeneration, it actually takes one of your shields away. So that, even though it looks like a shield, it actually take it away. There's the same thing for swords, too. Um, so so yeah, not all the cards are good. Yes, some, <laughs> yeah, some sets don't even have that, so we'll see if that comes up. Um, so a few other things. Um, instead of adventuring and journeying and picking a card... You can instead rest, which you'll usually do when you're running low on crystals. So anything with an X and then an arrow, like in the middle here, is a rest option. And you'll see that some cards give you alternative rest options. So like if you had this horn, you could also rest to take its action. But uh, in this one, you can transfer one wound for you to the boss. The boss has 99 health, and we got to defeat him before uh, we run out of wounds or before we go through the entire deck. 
Um, or most common, we can take three gems. And also, any other action that doesn't say multi-action is only once per turn. Once per turn, at any point during our turn, we can spend one crystal to give another player one crystal. Besides kind of coordinating what we take and that kind of stuff, that's like kind of the main uh, co-op aspect of things. Um, and the last thing is very important because yeah, I've never seen this before. for most boss... Yeah, this is only in the co-op. For most bosses, you can actually fight them, like you can go and attack them. Whimper is unique in that you can never attack I was about to say, he's a 1-1. One, one. I'm going to attack him every turn. So n normally when you attack the uh, the Overlord, they take 10 damage straight up. So it's like a great way to wi uh, bring their life down. Uh, Whimper, you cannot do that. Instead, he uh, you, you can hurt him by hurting uh, monsters because... That's what you can do for anybody. This ability on the right of the location says remove the top card of any of your three piles from the game to deal as much damage to the boss as the experience value of what the card was. So, the victory point. If back. I get this horn, you discard it to do three damage or two damage for this, three for this. Is bad at staying bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, your connection is awful. To, it, it is specifically awful right now. Yes, okay. but I bet to see you right. <laughs> and Peter and Jerry played for. Uh, sorry, we're we are laughing at you, not with you. Just just so you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, hate, I hate when I'm the one teaching the game. And my connection. Well, it's easy enough. All right, so yeah, well, you discard your top card. You do either two or three damage, whatever it says for the experience value. I assume because some of them will say get like a victory point for every whatever. I assume it's at the time you discard it is how much life you take away it, yeah that, that's what i was going to say like you sometimes want to time it so that you have a lot of the things before you do it and a uh, very important just like um any other ability that does not say you're good yeah. oh you were good <laughs> Never. multi-action um hello Everybody guess what Mike's saying. <laughs> it's a, we're going to make this a drinking game. Uh, no, Every time Mike's no, internet no, no, breaks no, 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 up. And it'll be in for a second. But yeah, a, a, any action. <laughs> <laughs> we are just not going to learn this th this thing. No, no. I mean, it's easy, right? Like, we've already gone over 90% of it. So um, he's just got to kind of clean up. We have no idea how to kill the boss. I mean, is it literally only getting rid of these victory point things? Yes. Okay, yes, Mike says. And you can only do one? No, the thing I want to say is you can only do this once a so. Once a turn. Yes. Got it. <laughs> Mike, Mike dialed up. We're going to hear beep. Oh, he beep, just beep, died. Beep. He just went all the way off. <laughs> I, 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 I left on purpose. Can you uh, hear me? Oh, better? we can hear you totally now. Good job. All right, cool. So I, I'll jump into Tabletop Simulator in a second because I know how to play the game and I can explain. Okay. So yeah, you can only use that ability once per turn, which can be very important because like if cards worth a lot of victory points get buried in your piles, you aren't gonna be able to get to them unless you like consistently destroy other cards from that pile because it has to be the topmost card of the pile. Oh man! Only once per turn. And that's your action for the entire turn. No, no, that's no, no, no. It's a minor action. You can do okay. it at the beginning of your turn. You can do it at the end of your turn. You just can't do it more than once per turn. Is a big thing. Gotcha. Um. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. I've seen all the comments about how. Uh, great i sound um <laughs> yeah so uh to go into the uh whimper guy and i actually here i'll turn on my camera for once oh i can oh, well oh wow yeah. wow hey, like, you hey. want to see him on the stream well, right? uh, well not right now here's the actual whimper. um it's a little bit clearer but yeah so i'll, I'll summarize there was enough camera time wait so... did you turn it off again <laughs> are you serious i was just about to like load you in uh, oh that's funny all right yeah, so, uh, yeah, Dan, I do see your question about bosses. Let me finish explaining him, and then uh, I'll, I'll get right into that. So, uh, Whimper is... So, the first thing he says, if you there are three or more Overlord tokens on this, you immediately lose. Basically, what will happen is some of his... Uh, he has unique cards in the co-op deck. Not every Overlord does, but he does. And also, when uh, a dragon... There are three dragons in the game, and they're, like, the toughest enemies... And if they go off the side of the board, basically whenever any monster goes off the side of the board, because when you rest, you discard the leftmost card. So if we're out, if we're low on crystals and we can't defeat monsters and they're on the left, we just got to let them slide off the board. Um, anytime that happens, the Overlord will get a bonus. In Whimper's case, he puts a bonus token 
tokens on other monsters to make them stronger. So when a regular monster that's a little goblin head falls off, he puts a plus one attack and plus one defense uh, token on every monster left on the journey track. And when a dragon falls off, he puts one of those overlord tokens on uh, the strongest monster on the journey track, which gives that monster plus three, plus three. It says that near the top. Um, and then he has other ways to put them on as well. And the big thing is, anytime a monster goes off the board while they have one of those tokens, it goes on Whimper. So if three of like his, you know, lieutenant monsters escape, uh, he immediately wins. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. By the way, the, and, uh, the does... chat's been hilarious. But go ahead and finish your stuff. I'm gonna. No, no I, I was looking at it. Um, yeah. So then uh, it does say at the bottom, after defeating a monster, deal one damage to the Overlord for each token it has, and three damage if it had an Overload token. So, um, as he boosts monsters, he is also sowing his own downfall, potentially, because uh, we'll be able to do extra damage to him for killing... Now, those like, are the only when they're monsters. here, right? Not when they fall off. Once they fall off, we're just done. Correct? Oh, well, when they fall off, they're just gone. By the way, I'm pinging but... this, and Mike can't see, because he's not in Tabletop Simulator anymore. Yeah, so this is I'm, awesome. I'm, that's very helpful. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing in the YouTube. Oh, okay. Yes, Items fall off pressing bins, but when monsters fall off, he's going to boost other monsters and uh, other stuff might happen. Got it. Cool. All right. So uh, just to answer, like, yeah, for uh, I know Dan had a question about this. Um, so in terms of, like, variety, so first of all, the cool thing is, which we didn't talk about because we already set up, we picked three decks out of... All of these? <laughs> if you get the one from Mythic that... Yeah, so and, and that's not even all of them now. If, if, if you get the set that I got from Mythic, I think there's like 30 different uh, decks, each one with uh, all unique cards. And you mix and match them. And each one has like a consistent theme and mechanic in it, so it's like kind of fun to like mess around with them. Oh. Um, but then they also have an Overlord for every deck. So I think there are... Thir- uh, I think it's like 28 Overlords, because some of them you can't use for co-op. But I think it's like 28 different bosses you can fight against. So, oh, they have Cthulhu um, one. There's a great old one. And I saw the Draco Lich. The art in this is amazing. So, yeah, I mean, it's... Wait a it's, minute. A board game with Cthulhu? Hey, we got we got <laughs> Puff the Magic Dragon over here. Or just Green the Magic Dragon. He lives by the sea. Oh, you know what? Ben- Benicleaf made a good point. Maybe it's me being on the stream is also messing me up. So I'm going to close that. So sorry, I won't be on the chat anymore. So, Peter, make sure you watch it. Yep, I, I will uh, watch the chat. All right, so let's kind of go back and go through this. So, no. So... No, what's messing up his voice over IP is his internet is by homing pigeons. <laughs> he sends it packet by packet. Yeah. He's got a, he's got like 25 homing pigeons, and he has to wait for the pigeons to return before he can send another pa- packet. It's just terrible. So Mike's about to get on. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> if you guys remember the old dial-in he's, he's modem. He's on a 1200 like, <laughs> He's connecting to copy server. <laughs> Mike still uses the uh, AOL CD that came free yes. in, the, uh, in the mail. He has to boot the CD every time. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Uh, let's see. So Benicleaf, this is my favorite part. So he asked if we do D&D. Then he says, ask because you guys have interactive chemistry. Seems like D&D might be interesting to watch. Might be. And then uh, there was a laugh afterward. Uh, yeah, it's great when I spend an hour prepping for an encounter and Peter just walks up and kills the guy in one round before he, he says anything more than hey what's going on hey, here? what's up gents now to be fair he was a <laughs> necromancer and there were all these zombies attacking us and a necromancer comes out i'm like no there were no zombies attacking you until after you killed the <laughs> I, was, I was like i was like i know how to end this encounter <laughs> let's kill the kill the necromancer guess what didn't happen so you turned an npc encounter that i spent an hour prepping for a two-hour combat that was just annoying yes yes all right so uh i I've closed every internet program I have except Skype and TTS. And so far, it's looking like the lowest ping I've ever had in my life. Well, so that's a good sign. and what do you normally have up? As an added benefit, we don't have to hear Mike typing into Discord the entire time and whatever other programs that he goes into. <laughs> as You know what? That, that, that does happen. <laughs> All right. Just up your, uh, your internet. So the uh, last thing that I didn't say is that the actual turn structure. So... At the beginning of each round, we're going to draw the top card of the AI deck, and then we'll each take a turn in order. But the AI deck will be messing with us, and um, it looks like they have this automated, but as the boss's health ticks down, 
eventually will get into two flames and then three flames. In the actual game, this is like a spinner, and it shows different uh, flame numbers as uh, you heard him more, which means the uh, AI deck will get worse, and it will hurt us more. The cards will be worse as they are, as we hurt him more. So he kind of ramps up as we uh, attack him. But that's uh, basically it. So you guys want to jump in? So Dan says, sure. just make up the rules. He'll correct you as you play. And then Betacleaf added, sounds like he's quoting the law of thermodynamics. <laughs> so apparently... <laughs> Uh, Mike's a poet. He, Mike is a poet. So now Mike's connection is fine. So literally, what's been screwing you up the entire time is that you've literally been chatting with other people. He's got like some kind of like uh, only fan service up the entire time that we've been like trying to play stuff. <laughs> only fans. <laughs> the entire time we've been trying to play stuff. He's like on all these services. Like I am not subscribing to your only fans. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so we're going to draw the first AI card, you jerks. Um, so if you want to look at the format, um, it'll always have two effects. So sometimes, like, the one and the two will be together. Sometimes the two and the three will be together. Hello? So here it says... Okay, you're still there. Hello. All right, just making sure. So here it says, pay a total of one per player or trigger the effect of a dragon invasion... Which for this guy is to put that super token on the enemy with the highest Well, there's value. no enemies. Oh, there's no enemies out. So what do we do? So, yep. We so that. unfortunately, you have to always pick one that will resolve something. So everybody has to oh. discard one crystal, sadly. Oh, Peter, can you promote me so I can make crystal? Where, where did that rule come in? I don't know. It's in the rule book. It's annoying sometimes, though. All right. So why that's could, it. Why couldn't your internet drop out when that rule came <laughs> <up>? <laughs> Nice. Um, here, Petey, wake up over here, and I'll show my uh, starting banner and of Beggar's ability. Sure. So, so my Underdweller ba banner, it says <laughs> Barry. Wait, did I? Did I no, lose? no, you're good. No, you're good. Uh, Dan said, guy's got to make money while he's explaining stuff to you. Talking about your OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. So, I don't actually know what that is, but you can explain later. Uh, trust um, me, it's a cheap subscription, Dan. Um, so it says bury the top item and the top enchantment to heal one. That is, again, an ability I can use once per turn, any like a little ability like that with a cost in front of an arrow. Yep. Uh, bury means that uh, my top card would go to the very bottom, oh, which can actually that's be helpful actually good for, for me this if boss, I want to like yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and then of beggars is a great one. It says when my turn begins, if I have fewer than uh, three crystals, I get one for free. That is really good, but oh no, and it doesn't. Excuse me, it doesn't cover either. Yeah, no, yeah, not for these things. They want them to be like kind of things that define your character. These are this is again in one of the expansion variants you can play with. You get uh, banners and no, uh, it does make you more powerful. Does that screw up the co-op or no? Uh, well, the, the thing is, we are playing against a more powerful boss. I gotcha. Uh, Whimper. There, there's four bosses that were designed only for co-op that have unique cards that get added to the basic AI decks. So we'll see some cards with his face on them as we go through. And for them, they, they are tougher than normal, so we, we might need the leg up, you know? Gotcha. All right, so I'm going to be nice. I'm going to take the horn, which is free. Benicleff says, talk nerdy to me. Oh, God. Uh, I think he's, if you talking click about, he's talking about the only yeah. Hey, guys, guys, guys. I think if you click refill adventure, we'll oh, do that entire okay. thing for you. That's okay. Boom. Yes. Wow. Automation. We get... So the horn is pretty loser. It says, uh, rest. I take one crystal for each uh, sword I have, which is zero. Or we can right now just rest at the location for three crystals. So I'm going to immediately, because you can do it once per turn, use a minor action to trash the horn. It's out of the game. Actually, it doesn't even go to the uh, to the discard in case there were things that interact with the discard. And he takes two damage for the victory points. My turn is done. Woohoo! So go ahead, uh, Jerry. All right. Uh... So what's Jerry? Hold on. Let's let's look. He's the. Oh yeah. Let's let's read that. Slime host banner of druids. Slimes tend to ooze to this flag because it allows you to speak to animals. They do not talk much, though. Nice. So you, so there you, you get go. to lose a sword to get a shield at any point? Once per turn. Yes, te te but I have no swords. So it's, yeah, it's temporarily during battle. There are lots of abilities that can like modify your stats during a battle to, to match the monster. Oh, All and right, whenever you heal, free. you get to take two crystals, which is seems good. All right, Jer. So... I assume you took the three victory point one? Yep. And then you just and he already trashed. trashed it and did three damage? Yep. So what we're saying is we're not going to build up our stats. All right, so for two crystals, well, you shield for each. Yeah, spend money for that. I mean, I guess we just keep going for the cheap stuff, right? 
I'll let you. I mean, usually until monsters come out. Now, by the way, uh, Peter, there is one important rule. Go, go to the thing uh, Jerry discarded. Yep. So, so they have more detailed rules in the book for like edge cases. But generally speaking, a lot of abilities in the game, like this one is supposed to be bad for you because you have to heal somebody else one heart. Remember, usually it's a competitive yes. game, but then you get two crystals. So whenever an ability is like that, you have to heal the boss? it instead helps the boss. Exactly. Oh. So here you would heal the boss one to get so two how about crystals. Those oh, things... Well, then I'm glad I trashed Well, them. how about those things? There was a card that said deal damage to another player. Would that go to the boss too? Yeah, so, so at any time it's something that would have hurt another player, you instead get to hurt And I think that's exactly. my special ability, so right? So the axe is good? So so the axe is good, because it's, cause it's good in, in competitive, too. Anything that's good in competitive is supposed to be good in co-op, too. So if you had some uh, attack when you got the axe, you could deal some free damage to the boss. Nice. So that's only when you take it, though. So you, we'd want that person to already have at least one other attack. No, at least two, because uh, arrow abilities are resolved before the card ever enters your play area. And there's not even two on the board, because that's break an attack, not give you an attack. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's read what I am. I am the Wood Elf Banner of Assassins. So it's 100% organic, and it has engraving all over your Mark's names so that you don't You already read that. Oh, I, I forgot the 100% organic part. Uh... All right. After taking an eyeball, heal one, and... No, I think just for entertainment on the stream, we should have you read as much as possible. <laughs> I mean, I am illiterate. We we all know this. Let's let's be honest. Let's not... Uh... That was the best thing about watching your Keyforge stream, is watching you mispronounce everything. I mean, that there there is that. There is that. All right. By, by the way, I do, I do want to call out, like, not everyone's going to feel like this game is super thematic, but I think they do a nice job of getting themed of things in the effects. So look at the of ice Peter just got. He can pay two crystals to get one shield for every attack he has. Basically, like he's really freezing them so they can't hit him back. Like he basically gets a lot of defense. So I think that's really nice. So reviewing your main channel, there are more than three of you that contribute. How many total creators are there in your group? Well, number one, I only do the, the Saturday, Saturday stream, so I'm not really a creator. I'm more like just there. Yeah, there's six Wait. of us. Yeah, not, not not counting Jerry, there's six, seven with Jerry. Well, and eight if you um, count Terrence, because Terrence is with me every Friday for Marvel Champions. Oh, that's true. That's true. So, um, yeah, so uh, it's it's uh, I I do the reviews on the main YouTube channel and some of the playthroughs. Colin started the channel and he does playthroughs. Berndt from Meet Me at the Table uh, does playthroughs for us and on his channel. Um, Jason Perez, formerly of Every Night is Game Night, and also on the Dice Tower, he does uh, playthroughs on the channel and does podcasts. And uh, Peter does podcasts and the streaming channel, and Steve does podcasts and the streaming channel. So it's a big happy family. And if you like Mike and I, we do podcasts together. Um, I mean, yeah. Like, I don't know why you'd like us together, but if you do, we're always the ones that say end design discussion at the end, because we both design games together as well. So... That's yeah, and if you like me, you're just out of luck. I mean, if if, right. if you like Jerry, then you have more problems than we can help tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, touche. Right, so, uh, the, the enemy card does nothing this turn. It says all enemies deal double damage. Anybody familiar with Mage Knight already knows how this works. If it gets past your shields, it does twice as many wounds. Nice. Yep. All right. Uh, so I'm up. I mean, up. Mage Knight reference strength. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, I'm still going to be cheap and get the uh, of ice. I like a permanent uh, defense, even if I don't use the other ability ever. So there we go. Separate question again. If anyone, uh, or if it fits, have any of you guys played Aeon's End? If so, how does it compare to this game? On Aeon's End. Oh, that's interesting. So not at all. I, I played this game the most. <laughs> this is only, I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't really, this isn't really a deck builder. Um, you do kind of combo your cards, but it's almost more like it, it, it's more low builder than deck builder because, um, although you do like cover up some abilities, so it's like a very, uh, the tableau building changes quite frequently. Um, but uh, again, what we're playing is the co-op mode, which I think works really well, but is, is certainly not the full focus of the game. It is a competitive card game first, and the bosses are just there for another way to get victory points in the competitive card game. So w while this mode does bear some passing resemblance to Aeon's End, this is definitely like a, a 
Like, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do a review for it, and I'll probably say I recommend it most for competitive play, and then cooperative is, like, a nice Well, yeah, bonus. for example, like, as long as this first card's not terrible, like, this thing, like, I'm not even looking past the first card, you know what I mean? We're competitive, we're trying to race to get, you know, the attack cards or whatever else first, trying to kill the monsters first, so I, I feel like, it, we'll, we'll talk about our first impressions or afterward, well, but. I like this game much more than Aeon's End, so. Well, there's that, too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Um, yeah, and by the way, just uh, for, for you all, like, people actually playing, um, it it's generally pretty good strategy for, like, at least one of us to go heavy defense and at least one of us to go heavy offense because, yeah, uh, where Peter's hovering right now, you'll see, like, the Ice Giant is a 4-7, the Barbarian's a 1-5, the Goblins are a 1-4. So here, like, defense is in a high premium, but later on, we'll get enemies that are the opposite and are very hard to kill, but do almost no damage to you. So it's often good for, like, in co-op. I've only played it a few times, but uh, i played mostly competitive for... Right, so you let's know, just win transferring wounds. So there's actually a bonus for us. Uh, one of the rest options here is to take one of our wounds and give it to the boss, basically doing a free damage to him and healing ourselves. Uh, while this is active, we would be able to move two wounds over and hurt him twice but, but none of us are wounded uh, we're still in kind of yeah, yeah we're, time we're still in the uh, preliminary phase so All they right, asked so what games we've helmet. designed uh so we got dark dealings over here and our big one is salvation road so those are the games we designed i don't think either of them are available for purchase though so we are not shilling for that <laughs> because uh Dark Dealings is now with Greater Than Games, and I think Van Ryder sold it out of Salvation Road, although you might be able to find it. But we do like to design co-op games, and so you know we started doing the podcast and doing this because we knew we wanted to play a lot of games, so we became you know knowledgeable with all the stuff that's out there, and just to help us with that. All right, so you got a one victory point pickaxe. Mike got what the helm. Yep. yep. All right. All right. Be back in a second. Um, I don't think I'm going to get of the wind. I mean, you see the top ability, right? The top ability is fantastic. Oh, for five attack once? Now, it's not fantastic right now because literally no enemy. I mean, it would help you kill the ice giant, although then he would just whoop you with wounds. I mean, that's so okay. I don't mind taking wounds early, especially when we can transfer him to the boss. Um, well, yeah, and also don't forget, if one of these guys goes off the board when we rest... He's putting a plus one, plus one token on every other So you want guy. me to get this and then I'll <laughs> fight this guy next turn? Yeah, we'll see Because, I mean, goes. you guys That's should be able to kill this guy and this guy pretty easily. Yes, I, I could spend money to get the, those guys. Oh, I forgot you could spend money. Yeah, by the money. way, people who are interested in our uh, crystals. Remember, you could spend two yeah, crystals yeah, for extra swords. Yeah, I forgot about that. All right, so I just broke my one. So, actually, I went from one down to zero. I still have one defense, though. Yeah, so Dan, people who, uh, wanna, uh, I was going to say, people who are interested in our designs, we will finally have, it's been a several years, uh, we've had games that were contracted and then fell through. We will have at least one game, should be coming out this year, from a pretty big company. That's all I'll share for now, but uh, very Is excited to see year? that one. Uh, I think so. Isn't that the plan? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we yeah, never I know. know. We I never know. know. I mean, we, we've thought yes. many years that we we're going to have at least one or two games coming out, so we'll see. We'll we'll let you know. Keep keep checked in to you know the podcast the youtube uh this youtube stream channel so we have two youtube channels there's one stop co-op shop streamed and then regular one stop co-op shop and then we have a podcast with the same name one stop co-op shop so uh we also have a discord so if you have your ear to the ground at any of those places you'll hear you'll hear what we've got coming up hey guys we have to each make this choice you can either take two wounds or discard an item or an enchantment that can be your starting one this one can be anywhere in your pile it doesn't have to be the top most nope so if you're not feeling your banner or your of whatever your class uh, you can take two uh take two wounds or get rid of one of those i'm just going to take the two wounds i think two wounds as well although all right i took two negative wounds so <laughs> Wait, what? Why is that yeah, negative? Yeah, Dan, as far as Aeon's End is concerned, I I am disappointed in Aeon's End because I find the market way too limiting. Because whenever I've yes. played, there's always been a few cards that are just completely worthless, and the other cards disappear very quickly. And it's just, eh. 
So I, I will say, Jerry, although I know we played it and it didn't go great, I do think uh, Aeon's End is better with the new versions, which have the expedition mode. That would be New Age and uh, what's the other one, Peter, or anybody in the chat remember? The, the most recent release. I don't release. remember because I haven't played any of them. I ha oh, Outcast, Outcast, Aeon's End, Outcast. Um, so first of all, it, it's like it's like a uh, it's like a replayable campaign, randomized campaign of three games in a row, and um, you can uh, after each game you get to customize the market some, get rid of a few cards you don't like, and add in some more interesting cards. So the first game might still be crappy and add some stupid cards but eventually everything kind of becomes useful um, all right by the way i and i agree with i somebody? agree with dan though he says it's in uh aeon's end is in his top five because every boss feels so different i i like aeon's end better than these guys i do homebrew it a little bit when i play with it uh just the turn order turn structure that's all but uh i i like it better than these guys but i can't disagree with them that the market is pretty boring most of the time uh but i, I all right so go ahead let's take now, finish what you're saying. No, no, but I, I agree with you guys about the market being boring, but I still really enjoy the game. I really enjoy the challenge of figuring out how to beat each boss with the market the way it is. So, Yeah, I, I, I'm higher on it than Jerry as well. I like the, I like yep. the market. Um, well, but yeah, so I'm fighting Barbarian. I have to spend one crystal. Um, and then I have currently zero attack and two defense. He has one heart, so I need to spend two more crystals with the town ability to get a temporary one attack yep, to so at least match his reminder, heart value. Reminder, and you can do this, it says multi-action, meaning you can do it more than once. Yeah, if you're rich, you can get all the attack you want. And then uh, I have two defense, he has three attacks, so he is getting three wounds. We knew what you meant, you, five attack. Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> um, oh, I'll actually, never mind, I'm going to spend one, look at my helmet. Oh, one crystal to get three defense. Apparently, I still break the internet when I press. Yeah, so I'm spending one crystal and taking no wounds. Never mind. That was much better. Um, Seems good. And cool thing about the Barbarian is I'm not going to throw him away for one damage on the boss. He gives me a permanent one boost. So he has taught me to fight better by killing him. So now I've got one attack. And two but then defense. you forget it as you throw him as the bo into the boss. <laughs> well, I'm not going to. I know. No, no, no. But you're, worth one I damage. forgot how to fight. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm going to kill this guy. That cost you one. That cost me one. And then what happens with this one, Mike? Steal. Do you get it from the boss? So, um, the, the boss can get gems, and if they would get five gems, they get some kind of bonus. I forget what it is. But in this case, uh, since he has none, you just get to steal a gem from the, the supply, so you get back the one gem you spent, basically. Here you go. I'll help you out. All right, so I'm going to use the this ability which is minus one sword to get a shield so i'll take two wounds nice oh so jerry should be the attack person because of his ability uh, is that and once i will per discard combat, this Mike? that is once per combat every ability in the game is once per turn unless it specifically says something like multi-action got it so you did two damage i did two yep. damage all right so i'm gonna we're getting a ton of monsters now. i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna discard my uh of the wind yeah, that to get gets, plus five. Here, now, does this immediately give me the plus one or get rid of the minus one attack as well? So would I have six? I mean, in Correct. theory. Yes. Like, it doesn't really matter. Yes. No. Th that is how it works. Though. Oh, wait. Did, I took one of these last turn. Oh, but I didn't have those wounds at that point. Because every time I take one of these eyeball cards, I do heal myself one. Uh, when taking any number of wounds, take a crystal also. So I should have gotten a crystal at the beginning of the turn for taking wounds, right? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm about to take more wounds, so I'm going to need another crystal. Uh, so I do five attack, plus one would be six. This goes to the discard pile. And this guy has four, and then he does seven to me. I have one defense, so I'm going to take six wounds. And ow. Yeah. Just going to say ow. <laughs> All right. AI card. Yeah, unfortunately, that guy's not worth almost any victory points. Yep, AI card. Well, if what I get it? some swords, he'll be worth some victory points. But right now, he's worth diddly. All right, I think... Let me search real quick. I think they put the... Okay, good. Yeah, the, the Goblins guys' cards are, are in here. We just haven't drawn any. So it says... Oh, it's the same one again. When transferring, transfer one additional. Oh, good. So that might be the thing to do for me actually... this turn. Although, that just gets rid of these monsters, which boosts up... A... I'm going to take one of the Barbarians. All right, to so the start of my turn, I get one crystal because of my beginning of Beggar's ability whenever I have uh, 
less than three. Yep. And actually, um, I have to rest because I can't. Oh wait, can I? I can fight the ogre now. Oh god, he deals double damage, and I have two defense, which means he would do eight eight wounds. That seems like a bad idea. I mean, um, I have eight wounds. What's wrong with that? <laughs> so we have twelve. Yeah, we lose, total. and we have forty to. Yeah. Um. Jeez. So, huh. Well, I think is if I rest, I can send both my wounds to the boss, but then I won't have any money still. But I'll get another money at the beginning of my turn because I'm still poor. So, yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to send both my, both my wounds to the boss. So he's down to, whoops, that's definitely tense. He's down to 90, but she drops off. And that means every other enemy is now uh, not, uh, yeah, has, let's see, where do they have those tokens? That was a he's terrible down. idea, Mark. Or Mike. I called you Mark. Well, no, there was literally... I, I could literally not have done anything except taking eight wounds. Would you rather me do that? Well, what what did they get? Plus one what? They all have plus one to both stats. Oh, that's, that's pretty bad. But we do two extra damage each time we kill them. Oh, to the boss? Yeah. I mean, if you guys want me to take the Wait wounds instead, that's fine. Um, no, that's fine. We'll see what happens. All right. I'm trying to find... We'll just put these things on them. Oh, here they are. Here they are. Yeah, I mean, you know what? For now, I think it's fine since we know they're all one of each. Sometimes they can get just one or just the other, but yeah. All right. Yeah, that was. We'll yeah. Okay, I feel bad. I'm sorry, guys. We'll see if this goes with it. Oh, hey. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Nice. This is a good mod. Uh, oh, look you at just that. Discovered that? Board. So, Benocliff said um, Did Vanessa do the art for Eldritch Horror? I don't know how he knows <laughs> Vanessa, but no, Vanessa is Mike's wife. She did the art for Salvation Road, but definitely not Elder Char. Uh, or did right, one of the Elder Char artists Elder work on Salvation Road? Looks like a cool game. Um, so we has, oh, I think ahead, he's saying up. that the art for Salvation Road looks similar to Elder Char. Um, I like I, it. I like that comparison. I don't know if. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he he does six damage. That has two health. Yes. yes. Yep. Two health, six damage. So five's getting through your armor. Yeah. See, the eight wouldn't have been so bad. <laughs> and you, you do two damage to the boss because he had two tokens on him. Wait, he had two tokens? So uh, the boss takes one damage for each plus defense and please each plus attack token. So. All of these guys are going to deal two bonus damage to the boss if we kill okay, them. Okay, so did you do the two damage? I, I took care of everything. By the way, whenever one of these tokens falls off, the boss heals two for each token. So if this guy gets away, he's going to heal four. Again, I, I probably should have done a different boss. We're probably going to lose horribly, but we can at least see how I mean, it goes. It seems not great. I mean, I can kill this guy, but I'm going to take a bazillion wounds. You're going to take the eight that Mike would have taken? Yes. Well, more now, actually, because now he's got more defense or attack. You have enough money to get to the Barbarian to get extra attack? I mean, he's not as bad. Um, Let's see what my attack is right now. Zero. Oh, no. My attack's up, back up to one. One attack, one defense. I definitely have enough money to get there. Um, Remember, you need two more attacks. Let me uh, take defense. the over. I'm His probably... So I would need I'm to spend four over. crystals to kill him. Okay. I definitely have it. All right. So since I have the crystals, let me spend two to get to him, two more to kill him. Right? Nice. So two to get to him because two on the bottom, two to kill him because he doesn't have one defense. Now he has two. So we get rid of these two. So that's two damage to him. And I'm going to hold on to the ogre, though. Yep. So that gives me another plus attack. Now, how many wounds does he do to me? He attacks for six. I had one defense, so I take five wounds. So, yep. there's that. Finally getting some items again. The great sword. So, I, I like... Uh, this is from the Angel set. Like I said, every uh, set has their own things. The Angel set has the most powerful cards in the game, but they hurt you every turn until you cover up their best part. So, the great sword gives you four attack, but hurts you for one wound every turn. But finally, once you cover it up and lose the three attack, you also lose the damaging effect. And it's just a so one attack boost. It, at that there's point. no way for me to switch these two, right? Switch what two? These two enemies. 
Because what I'm thinking is maybe I take the angel and get rid of this guy to get a ton of damage on him, right? Yeah, so there is no way unless you have an effect that says Barry, which is in certain decks, but not anything we have right now. So I can just trade him in for victory point, but I am going to lose a sword doing that. We'll see. We'll see. All right, so new Overlord. Uh, each player whose strength um, and shield is less than four takes three. So if your total is three or less, which mine is, oh, take three wounds. I'm taking three wounds. Nope. You know what? I'm just at four. Hey, guys, I may, nice. I may or may not have 16 wounds right now. You're at 21 out of 40 to lose. Nice job. Um, so I... Oh, God. Oh, I get another money. Jerry, I think I'm going to have to take the ogre off to rest again, so... So it goes. Are you serious? So these guys are going to each yeah. get plus one more? I mean, we're never going to kill those wolves, then. Oh, well, you know what, here, let's... <laughs> if you guys don't mind, I'm going to give the boss back two life. Take back my two wounds and say I got three money and not be an idiot last turn. Look at that, take backs. Mike is a cheater, everybody watching. That would leave me with four crystals. I would not have gotten my one bonus this turn. That'll give me enough to attack the ogre and use my helmet ability so to not get hurt very much. You rested and then took wounds off? You know what? It was a bad idea. Wait, do you I get two more wounds now. or something, though? He did. Yeah, I'm good now. All right, so I'm attacking the ogre. I need to spend two crystals to get to the extra damage because I only have one attack, and he's boosted to two. One crystal to use my helmet. So that means I'm at five defense. So two hits get through. Or I'll get rid of one of these. I'll get rid of a ah, not that. I'll get rid of a one and get a. Yeah, we're not using the wound. Okay, deck. Let me delete the wound. Yes, we're not. Yep, we're I definitely not using that. I was like, ah, oh, if it's too easy, we'll use the wound deck. No, no, we're not using the wound deck. So wait a minute. You have nine wounds. And, and I'll do five damage to him. I know. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, it does two plus whatever he. Oh, and two more. Yeah, yeah. so it so, uh, was seven total. He's at 81. All right, so we're doing pretty good damage-wise. I mean, are we? <laughs> I feel like we're not. <laughs> like, I mean, if you say so. So, Jerry, if I get this sword, I can trade it in for four damage. Um, But that would... Oh, uh, we do have a white dragon. <laughs> The dragons are super hard to Wait, kill, you took but the sword, they're Jerry? clearly worth it. Uh, that's all I can do. Okay. Does that get you to enough to kill uh, a wolf next turn, Jerry? Yes. Nice. I mean, that, that, then I'm all for that. Uh, all right. So I'm probably going to have to rest now. Or what's this thing? Oh, no. I... He's two health, three attack. You can kill him, right? I mean, I can. Player to the left heals, too. Hey, and I let Jerry heal. Or oh, the boss heals too. That'll heal the boss. I mean, I'm still doing it. Yep. I mean, he's gonna take three damage and heal two. Yeah, so it's gonna it's gonna be one damage in the wash, but it's still better than him being on the track. So wait, what's going on here? So I hit for two, and then I take two damage back, and it costs me two. All right, so it costs me two. Let's do this right. I take two wounds. One, two. Oh, I've been forgetting to do. Yeah, you should have a gem. I should have gotten a gem wounds, last like... turn when I took all that damage. I definitely took another one. I think I even had one more that I missed, but that's okay. I'll just take the two for sure the, from the damage now and the damage from uh, the beginning of the turn or whatever. Um, I, I think I missed more, but that's okay. I'm... Yeah, Peter, I, I hurt the boss once since you would discard that guy for three damage and the boss would heal yep. too. All right. Uh, new co-op or new AI card. Oh, I've been missing the chat. Uh, board game culture question. Oh, this one's interesting. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Do the, do the card first. Yeah, so uh, it says uh, for this turn, you can attack any non-dragon enemy for free. You have to spend crystals. But then after you kill a non-dragon enemy, you lose one crystal. Um, so it's actually a bonus for us. Like uh, if anybody can get to that angel, for example. or I mean, I don't think I can kill any of these guys still. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, that's not going to happen. All right. I mean, they have an oh, protection right, item, which is good. I'm going to get the... Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that because I have exactly two uh, crystals with my... I, mean, I have exactly two, and that would heal ability. me. But 
I guess it doesn't matter. Well, it's that or rest and give these guys stuff. No, no, no. All right, so I'm done. Nope, I'm going to be the one that rests mm, and so give all the guys stuff. <laughs> Peter, Peter, do, do check in with the chat. I didn't want to mess you up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So up. board game culture question. Uh, again, for Benicliff, uh seems like aficionados are increasingly starting to follow designers rather than just look at themes and titles thoughts i mean my thoughts are that's way smarter right like designers that make good games make good games i mean everybody has duds and things like that well why don't you kill this one right well i guess it literally doesn't matter never mind because i don't have any crystals well no it's yeah, free remember him, it's free free oh, to attack well, anybody that's that is true i mean but it doesn't matter literally doesn't it would have been the exact same that's why I said doesn't matter. But you do lose a crystal afterward, but I guess you still don't have any, so it doesn't matter. So what happens in that situation, Mike? Jerry, did you take did you take two damage off for him being a boosted enemy, Jerry? What? Did you hurt did the boss uh, no. should have taken there. eight damage to okay. There you go. Alright, we have one wound left, guys. Okay. So Wait, what? No. Oh wow, he's right. Yeah, we lose. There's no way. Yeah, I mean, or we'll just have to use the we'll just have to use the transfer action and let the boss heal for a while, I guess. Uh, so we transfer what one wound to the boss? Yeah, one wound to the boss is your rest action. Or if you don't want to, you can just rest and try to get better items for later. Like the helmet lets you spend money to get a ton of he defense. Remember? Uh, I mean, I feel like even if we do rest, it could just do damage to us at the beginning of the round and kill us, right? So none of that seems yes, none of that seems that good. Is possible. That's true. Uh so does transferring count as healing? No, no, it does not count as. Yeah, I was wondering that too. I, well, I, actually, I don't really know. Let's say yes because it is because usually that would be a healing effect. Right now we have no healing effect, so I would say yes. Oh wait a minute! No, we're dead. I, wait, why? I forgot my great sword gives me a wound. Ha! Ha! All right. So. You want to? I'm sorry. I sh I should not put have put us on hard mode. By the way, mode. like that, that Mike was... does this. You put us on hard Mike... mode. Yeah, I said th th that boss is one of the four ultra bosses instead of the regular. By the bosses way, Mike does play. this every single time when we first play a game. He's played it twenty times. We've played it zero times. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna put it on the hardest thing ever because I'm bored with the, the basic level, and we just get crushed. And we're like, well, that game was stupid, and it's not the game's fault. That's that's the you know whatever. <laughs> It, it makes the stream really fast. Yeah. Well, no, set it up again. <laughs> well, no, I, forget I, that. I, I would note that Mike was the one who re took a rest action to transfer two damage, and then yes, screw us. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was that was not great. All right, and he's the one who has the experience. Set it up game. again. It shouldn't take long. Oh wait, that was the wrong one. Hold on. All right, so let's answer some questions while one. we're at it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so yeah, no, so my thought on designers versus you know themes or whatever. Just because something has a theme doesn't mean that it's going to adhere to that theme, right? I, I don't see the point at all of following themes or whatever else. You know, my pref my preferred way to go is to definitely follow the designer. Because I think th this is not the same mod. I I'm trying to load the new one. It, it okay. should be loading next. Got it. I think, or maybe not. No, you did <laughs> the same one again. All right, well, I'll be back in a second. All right. Um... So, yeah, no, designers to me are the ones who make the mechanics and make the game feel like it feels. And so to me, I'd much rather follow a designer than follow a, uh, a, a specific theme or whatever. What are your thoughts, Mike? Uh, while, while the mod's loading, I'm probably going to have the worst internet ever. So maybe wait on my thoughts. <laughs> All right, so three players, co-op. Normal difficulty, Mike. Normal, not hard or very... What did you select? Hard, very hard? Come on, be honest. Co-op co -op specific is where the hardness came in. Oh, not from difficulty up here? Correct. So manually choose one, right? Yeah. Or just get rid of the wound deck. We're not doing that. We're adding in banners and classes, right? Yes. Like uh, events or no? No, they're they're extra hard. All right, Odyssey overlords, yes. So just manually choose overlords. The only other option we need, right? Oh, Mike's at nine nine nine. I see why Mike's not talking right now. 
Mike's internet, and it's frozen at 999 too. But anyway, so that's my thoughts. Jerry, how about you? Are you back? So, Mike, you back? I am back, yes. Hello? <laughs> yes. All right, cool. So, sorry. The mod loading I knew was going to be terrible. Yeah, so, so my thought is uh, I, I tend to do a little bit of both. I tend to follow certain companies because I like the games they sign or I like the support they give or I like the development teams they have. Um, and I tend to follow some designers. So like um, uh, David Thompson, who does a lot of war games, he did Undaunted. Um, he did Dire Alliance that I backed recently from uh, Blacklist Games. Uh, he has a train game called Switch and Signal. Like I haven't played a single one of his games that I haven't enjoyed. I've covered a ton of his games, like almost I've covered a large majority of what he's designed. I'm also friends with the guy, like from having covered his games and talked with him. But yeah, like I'll, I'll get they'll get mummies. Mummies is uh, complicated. No, I wasn't gonna do mummies. I was actually gonna do gladiators, but yeah, gl gladiators is interesting. It gives us another way to attack the gladiators, boss. undeads, and uh, Draken. That seems pretty cool. Yep. I mean, I did so... it by theme. I have no idea. I've not played any of those. <laughs> But then I also like some companies, like Chip Theory Games. At this point, I'm a big fan of theirs because I think they do, like, a really cool job. They really support – they're, like, have some of the best customer service. So, like, I just kind of, like – they build low – I mean, I wouldn't buy their games if I thought the game sucked. But if the games are good, like, having loyalty and strong branding and that kind of stuff on top of it is just, like, kind of the icing on the cake that really makes me want to stick with them. Um, or uh, GMT, I really like a lot of their war games. They come up with a lot of good stuff for, like, the war game side of things. I uh, used to do a lot of Fantasy Flight, but at this point, I'm very hesitant to buy anything from Fantasy Flight that isn't like an Arkham expansion. or an Well, they're LCG not the expansion. same people, right? When you used to well, follow right, Fantasy exactly. Flight, it was different designers. Christian Peterson was there. Like, it was a very different group than it is right now. And so, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I, I, I think companies is a good way to go because usually it's one person at the top or a, a small group of people that are making the decisions. Oh, that's a shark dude. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, let me see how it is. So it's a, it's a small group of people deciding what games they want. And if they like the same kind of games, then they'll probably like the same kind of games that I like too. So, uh, yeah, companies is a good way to do it as well. But designers, usually if they're good, they're good. That's not 100% true. Not every game from a designer is going to be equal quality. Um, just for several reasons. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, look at Barton Wallace. He has everything from really great no, games to, to, to games that I think <laughs> are terrible. A lot of Shabbatles, the one for me, I mean, outside of Bunny Bunny Moose, and I don't know, I only played that a couple times. And, uh, <laughs> so, but well, outside of that, I think... I never got into Mage Knight. Most of his stuff's good. Yeah, but you can't say it's not a good game, right? I mean, just because you didn't get into it doesn't mean it's bad. You know what I mean? I don't really follow oh, yeah, games yeah. or companies, other than Mind Clash. I'm a big fit Mind Clash fan. Yeah, my, my class is another great one for a company. All right, so uh, we're fighting Dogon, the Sharkon of the Six Seas. It's like he's he, he's he's both a, a Khan, like Genghis Khan, and maybe also a fan of Shaka Khan. Entirely Shaka possible. Khan, Shaka Khan. Well, that, they, that's they, what I was just thinking. <laughs> Don't know if so, they uh, uh, they kickstarted both their games. Which one, Mind Clash? No, your games, Salvation Road, and. Uh, Dark Dealings. Yes, yes, oh. yes. We, we actually have done, we've been involved in three Kickstarters because Dark Dealings had an expanion as well. Yep. Um, that, yeah, so uh, for people watching, the rules are the same, but now we have Dog on. So this guy, we can attack. Here's how attacking the boss works. So first of all, uh, co-op bosses will have a better stack because this is actually a co-op uh, single, like, regular size card you put over the big Overlord card. Got it. So he's actually uh, seven attack and six defense if you want to add those tokens we need two of the reds and one of the uh, blue claw one huh that's not luck <clears throat> so um we now have a third option <laughs> just totally it's on the board <laughs> here it says challenge instead of uh yes instead of uh <laughs> taking a card from the board we can do the challenge where we uh well here peter i'll just fine there i deleted the anchor is it points. a new carpet New carpet, new challenge. 
inside jokes made for great yeah, yeah so we went to uh, one of these uh miniature golf places and similar to kickstarters that say now playable rules on them you should never go in there if it says new carpet new challenge it means the carpet's so bad <laughs> that it's basically like putting on a shag r- rug and like the ball won't go anywhere <laughs> it's just the worst thing ever <laughs> Uh, uh yes so new carpet new challenge same as now playable rules for board games <laughs> now playable. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh uh, mike mike, was that? Was mike that covered mike? yeah that was human interface that was human interface. <laughs> now playable. Yeah. Yeah. seriously go to the human interface video on kickstarter it's hilarious now playable rules <laughs> or something like this <laughs> it was awesome well because there was their second kickstarter because the first one was a train wreck and then the this one was a train wreck um so yeah, so we now have a third option for attacking. That that other boss was weird and that we didn't have this option. We can challenge the boss. So first of all, you'll see that it has a cost to do so. Does that say six? I can't say five six. Five crystals five, to man. fight the overlord. Cost five crystals to fight him? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, wow, you're in right. so, the yeah. <laughs> yes. That, that, that is the highest that is the highest I've ever seen on Overlord. Um so as your turn, you can spend five crystals and fight him. It's just like fighting an enemy, but if you defeat him, this stuff at the bottom happens. And this, this is pretty much the same for every Overlord. He takes 10 damage, but he gets a plus one attack and a plus one defense. So he gets harder to do it two each time. And this is unique to this guy. You lose one Overlord token. So what does that mean? You'll see that if we at any time have... If one player has, is it four with three players i can't see the card too well i don't know what you're looking is the for. middle number four pay three or right here or the overlord attacks no, no. okay right here. starts Whenever with any player would have one one attack and two extra life reinforcement tokens whenever any player would have uh six four three so i assume it's four for three player yep yeah, um so oh, if, yeah. if one of us gets you four of those game. we lose the game okay if you attack him, you lose one. And whenever a dragon falls off, you'll see it says the Overlord attacks the player with the lowest defense. Attack means you just compare his blue to your defense. You can't hurt him back. When you still take wounds? And so he hurts you a bunch. And he... So you still take wounds, but additionally, he's going to give you one of these tokens. And, and you uh, can't fight him. If you get too many, then... Anybody has four, they die. Yep. Or we all lose. Well, we all, we all lose, exactly. All right. And we got very different. White. Wow, look at all the attack we have in no defense this time. In, in fact, the Warhammer takes away. But God, the Warhammer is four attack yeah. by itself until you cover yep. it up. I mean, all these are like plus attack until you cover them up. And for the trap, I guess we'll put it on the Overlord. Because it's supposed to be something you give to another player. And he'll have minus one attack uh, on us. Do we have new banners now, too? Yep. Okay, so let's go through as we do take our turn. So Mike, you're first. Go through your new banners. Yep, so I've got the Troglodyte Banner. I can unbury it. That means it has to have at least one card on top of it, and I can put it on top where it will do nothing special for me, but it gives me plus two defense. So I can kind of, like, mess up the stuff I have on top of my deck to uh, to get more defense. And my other one is, as a rest action, I can lose all my crystals and take five. So clearly better, better if I can make it work out that I, I'm already down to zero or one. You before can or have to? You can. Every X is a different rest oh, option. Oh, right, right, right. So that would be your rest option. All right, I assume you're taking the scythe. T- yeah, well, we have to do a co-op code card first. Oh, we can fight for free. That's not going to help at all. Um, and then you give him three damage, Yeah, right? so I'll take the scythe and give three damage. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll definitely do that. That sounds seems, great. Seems good to uh, me. Two attack. Boom. What is Journey to the Graveyard? Well, hold on, man? hold on. Before you take your thing, let's go up here. Put that up here. Let's see what you have. Uh, Underdweller Bane. Bury the top. Bury my top two cards, and I heal one. Okay. And Oh, I forgot I had that. I could have been healing. And blocks. the other one lets me <laughs> journey to the four and five places at a cost of three. Oh, oh that's pretty nice. Uh, so the, jo- the shovel for a gem and a rest action, journey to the graveyard. Oh, does that mean you can take... So what it means is, like, you, you take a card, any card from the graveyard, um, at zero cost. If it's an enemy, it's as though you're fighting it, so we can fight an enemy we already killed once. If it's a, uh, if it's a, uh, item, you can take No, we're not sending so enemies at the boss, monsters though. to kill the right. guy, to hurt the guy, right? What do you say? 
you first. We're not sending our our victory points at him. Oh, you're right, right. Yeah, and it even says this. You remove it from the game. So this would be something that was rested away, Jerry, not something that we uh, spent to hurt the boss. Oh, can we still spend things to hurt the boss? boss? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That is always an option. It's just that usually you can also attack them. We will never be able to attack the Overlord ten times. That would be impossible. I was thinking about that. Okay. Yes. (laughs) All right, so this is a trap. Give to another player. So that would... It's a trap. It's a trap. Uh, to dec- I mean, sure, right? Give that to the boss. Yeah, that's what I did. So... Yeah, let's just take away one of his reds and call it a And day. then we'll remove it from the game. Here, put it over here. Oh, yeah, good call. That way we remember, in case he has something to yep. job it later. Uh, so let's see what I am. Ooh! 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 Three victory points for every dragon. Can I discard this card to... But only if it's my only top card. Only if it's the top card. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it's yeah, not a great worth... one. Uh, another player. Yeah, I'll grab you a different one. Peter, I'll grab you a different one. Hold on. Because, yeah, these are, again, everything is, like, semi-balanced for co-op play. <laughs> but definitely balanced. Uh, that's your banner, Peter. Is that right? Yes. Another player may give you a actually, coin on their turn. Te- that player. I will say, te- technically, you, uh, technically, you draw two and pick one. Okay, well, I picked this one. Discard a monster to heal to. I choose you, Pikachu. Yes. <laughs> Although, uh, what is this dueling? Getting stuff? rid of a dragon hurts. Uh, look at this though. Any of you can give me one crystal to get plus one attack. Is that again something that really doesn't work co-op? <laughs> um, did, we, did we choose a deck that was bad because? What's well, just the, dueling the, the, other the, the, players? The banner... No, no, the dueling will work. The dueling, I'll explain okay. in a second. Here, Peter, I have a different class. Again, you would have had two choices, and that one doesn't make any sense. I mean, it makes sense. It's great for us, but too good. After taking a monster, take a crystal. Got it. So, uh, dueling is unique to the Gladiator deck, which we do have. And it's excellent um, if you have something that lets you duel a player. Because in uh, this mode, it lets you fight the boss without paying and whatever his cost is. So here we would save the five crystals and still be able to fight the boss. And the other bonus is that he does not get the plus one, plus one token thing when we hurt him. He just takes ten damage. Wait, really? Yeah, so, so dueling is pretty unbelievably so good it's against bosses. broken That's... against this deck is what we're saying here. No, you, you still fight him. He's still going to do like 50 wounds to you if you aren't well trained. So, gotcha. no. You still have to actually beat him. <laughs> well, all right, uh, we're doing a card, right? Yep. Okay, each player bury an item or an enchantment, or the boss heals for two, which we actually have hurt him. Well, he heals for two. Did you? Oh, add you don't back? have anything. Oh wait, we can bury. Yeah, you bury. Uh, unfortunately, fine. now I only have one attack because I buried I myself. I cannot bury but, anything, so he does heal for two for me. And you have to heal him too, yeah. I do not have anything. Actually, Jerry, if either of us wants to keep our stuff on top, we can just give him. He'll only get one life, so who cares? Okay, fine. All right, so I'll, I'll still. I have to. Um, I have to, I have to bury mine because one of us has to. But all right. So what's this? Uh, of death, remove from the game, journey to the graveyard without ending your turn. So it's a minor action, and it's worth one victory point for each skeleton, which is specific to uh, enemies from this set. So every enemy in this in that one third of the deck will be a skeleton. But I'll skip it and get a Warhammer. You can't go below two. I mean, I'm below zero defense. So I'm gonna be extra defensive. <laughs> um, all right. Four more attacks, so I got that. Good. I do have a lot of attacks. So how do we no duel defense. him? The cards that say duel and they're one time use. That's why it's not broken. Ah, I got it. If you get this net, you can immediately duel him. And would it cover... So you don't get this first, though. You immediately duel before you get the plus one attack, right? Correct. So it's good for whoever gets this sword to do it because they get plus two attack for that. Yep. And there's another Gladius, so... All right, uh, Jerry, you're up. So... You can get that for two. No, but then I won't have enough. I'd have to spend crystals to do it. Well, I'm going to take the Warhammer. So that cost me four crystals? Four? To duel them? No, you can't do both. You do one thing. 
No, this just gives you plus two when you are dueling. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. If, you, if you get, like, the net next turn or the of challenge, you can duel them. All right, so... All right, uh, Peter, what you doing? Did you get that? I mean, Warhammer. I need Warhammer. Makes sense, so that cost me one. And I actually have a weapon right, we now. We got our first enemies coming out. We got a dire lion and a lich. Lovely. All right, AI card? Yep. Um... Enemies deal double damage this turn. Well, there goes my plan. Well, nope. <laughs> Although, actually, it is not the boss. It is only uh, basic enemies. So if you wanted to fight the boss, you could. Um, I want defense. The only thing it gives it to me is of challenge. And then I actually do have enough wounds. I mean, I do have enough uh, def uh, attack to hurt the boss. So, yeah, I guess I'll do it. Um, I'll get of challenge. I don't have it yet. That's going to cost me two. Although my Warhammer is literally taking away all the defense it's giving me. <laughs> all right, so I attack the boss. I mean, I mean, gosh, you could take the terrible. attack one. Because you're going to be covering up two of your attack. No, this is a uh, of. This is oh, here. gotcha. Gotcha. All right, so um, I can't unbury this for plus two defense or I wouldn't be killing him anymore. My uh, little ability. So, yeah, so I take seven wounds. It seems like a terrible choice. You're too worried about taking wounds. It's a worse choice to leave the wounds on the board, and, like, then we get a million wounds. I don't think about what happened last time. Oh, so I... Yes, last time you should have taken the eight uh, wounds, and then all the creatures wouldn't have been way worse, I think. Yep, so I took, uh, I did ten damage to him. And he does not get a bonus again because of the uh, thing. That seems All right. real I'm good. Done. All right, Jerry, you doing the uh, net? I can't get him. I'll only have three attack. Uh, I guess I could. Yeah, you can spend. I would two use crystals. all my crystals. So. All right, I'll do. Well, one. that doesn't happen first. So first, no, you have four attack. Yeah, well, dude. you don't have the net yet. Yeah, you have four attack because you you still get this because otherwise it would bury it before you were able to use that, right? So first you do this, the uh, the target. Oh, then, then you put, you it, put down? it down. So you have yeah, four right. attack. That cost me one crystal to buy, right? Yes. Yes. So I am currently at four. Four. So you do need to spend two crystals to get one more. Well, does he not get these when you do? I thought you said. He no, doesn't no, no. get he new doesn't, ones. He... Normally, when you hurt him for 10, he gets two more, one of each. Oh, gotcha. He gets tougher right. and tougher. Because it says that's for a successful so fight, not after crystals. a successful duel. All right. So I did five damage. Ten damage. No, no, no. Jerry, you just, if you if you re, if you you get him, then you do ten. It's just always Right, ten. I understand, but I did five. Got it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got five. you. Yeah, and he's got he seven attacks. Seven, on that and dude. I have one health, so I take six wounds. Yikes. All right. I mean... And then you cover up your Gladius. Yeah, it's all fine. It's fine. How you doing, Chad? I wish I could see you, but then Chad's I Chad's been quiet. My computer um, I, I think it got after midnight and people turned into pumpkins. Oh, uh, yeah. Good. Um, of death. <laughs> so remove from the game. After Journey to the graveyard. Now. Don't end your turn. Well, there's nothing in the graveyard, right? So that's... Well, hold on. I'm going to discard the net to do another damage to him. Oh, you could take this as a free action at any point. Oh, okay. Right? You sure, Jay? You don't want the attack? Uh. What's he discarding? He's discarding his net. To I, one I mean, you can do it later, I guess. Takes away my defense, though. That's the problem. You could also oh, do it yeah, at I the mean, beginning okay. of your turn, right? Like, you could discard it at the beginning of your turn. You know what I mean? Wait, wait. Peter, what are you doing? Well, I'm waiting for Jerry to figure out what he's doing. I'm done. Um, So should I take the Gladius? Or should I... I mean, I can't kill the Lich. I could kill this dude. Well, then you would. it would give you a free duel. So you probably want to wait to do that until you can fight the boss. Uh, how much attack do I have? That would be four. So you could do that, I guess. Again, we're, we're going to kill ourselves with wounds very quickly, it seems. <laughs> you might want to slow uh, play a little bit more. But... Dude, we lost the last game by a lot. So, hold on. So, I, I mean, I couldn't do it because I need to get five. 
attack anyway. So why don't I take the Gladius for one? Yep. Although that makes me my normal attack worse, but okay, we got we got to play the long game. We gotta fight people when we can. Oh, nice easy gladiators uh, come out. That's nice. Oh, all right, uh, AI card. Uh... Okay, uh, banner and class abilities don't work this turn. Okay. Oh, and shuffle. So pretend you don't have your banners and your classes. And yeah, it also tells me to shuffle. That's the shuffling card. Um, that's kind of a bummer. I guess I will buy... Oh, can't buy anything. Um... <laughs> I could kill the lion and fight the boss again and get us a ton of wounds. What do you all think? I mean, I think that's fine. Just, How much defense You do can you fight the lion and not duel the boss. I mean... You think that's better? That doesn't make sense, yeah, just, does it? Discard it. I mean, it's seven, it's seven more wounds, Peter. We'll be at 14 wounds out of 40 just from me. I feel like that was me last game. I feel like yeah. So I'm gonna yeah. spend I'm gonna spend two crystals. I'm gonna kill the lioness to get him out of our way. Um, I do take three damage, and then I'll spend him to do three damage to the boss. I did the three. Thanks. So if this falls off, we don't add anything to anybody else, right? Only if this one. Correct. Falls yeah, off. yeah. The, the the of death falling off doesn't hurt us at all. So it's kind of like a free rest. Potential. Yeah, I'm resting. All right. So here, if you click rest, it should do it automatically. Oh, Peter. Oh, okay. Oh, and I guess it would add the tokens, too. All right. So I could kill these guys. Yeah, we got some nice easy ones. The Serpent Fly is good because, yes, he gives you a negative, but you can uh, either keep him in a discard for a big boost or you can discard him to do three damage and not have the negative attack. Um, So how much damage do I do right now? I do three, which is not as good as four. <laughs> uh, so I could fight one of these. Uh, or do I just get the armor? I mean... Plus two defense when dueling. Uh, that would be my first armor. I don't know. Alright, I'll get the armor. So that cost me one. Nobody shouted out that they wanted it. I'm gonna take it. Alright. Probably gonna rest and have us all get hurt. Uh, oh, pay a total of... Oh my god. Oh, pay a total of one gem per player or trigger a dragon invasion. A dragon invasion would be he attacks person with lowest defense and an attack player takes a token. Do you guys have three deep gems? I have one. Oh, Jerry, you did it? We all do one? I put in two. I, I did two. I don't have any. All right, I did one. Jerry did one. Right. So, right. by the way, right, so Dan did have a question for you earlier. They uh, reminded me. So, uh... Arkham LCG being your favorite game, how do you feel about the one shots and which is your favorite? Um, I really like the Venice one. I think, um, I think like running around the circle and uh, I don't want to spoil much, but the ending is like one of the most crazy, exciting endings in any Arkham scenario that I've played. Um, but the hotel one was pretty cool. The werewolf one felt a little restrictive, but I still kind of enjoyed it. I have not played uh, the Blob or the Labyrinths. Um, I think that's all of them. So, yeah, so I, I played some. Got it. Do you um, like them? Right, like, would guys. you rather play a one shot or a full uh, campaign? Let him take his turn. Oh, okay. I mean, I'd rather play a campaign. I think I like how So, that build. did right, not so add the, the tokens. So, the Lich. No, the Lich. Well, they don't have tokens. This is a different boss. Oh. Game. So we have to pay three. I have to pay three, or the Overlord attacks me. So I take seven more damage. So what are you doing as your action? Right. I'm getting five gems with my uh, of merchants starting ability. Got it. So I should be good for a while now. All right, I killed the gladiator. Nice. And I'm assuming you're not gonna <laughs> duel. Take two wounds. Yeah, the, not having any defense come out is very rough, and there's still none. And this is all. Does. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can talk about this in our final thoughts, but this is all stuff that all I'm. All right, uh, so I'm gonna kill the gladiator, my last crystal. Uh so I don't think I duel the boss. Cause I, well, I can't kill it, so no. 
Do, 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 do. I would have plus two. Actually, I don't have any armor at all. I'm sorry, because I have broken armor. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to do two damage with this gladiator. Nice. All right, uh, AI card. I think we're in trouble again. Oh my gosh, I was about to fight. Okay, all monsters have plus two health this turn, and your banner and class abilities don't work again. Well, I guess I can skip past the harder guy. So plus two, I could still kill the serpent fly. All right, I'll attack the serpent fly for one. Unless somebody else needs to do that, because I have a lot of gems. I don't have any gems, so I'm resting. Uh, I can't do anything. Shoot. Uh, can I kill the killer plant? I would need two more attack, which would be all my oh, gems. Oh, hold on. After I kill a monster, I do get a crystal, so I do have one. That was my first time killing a monster, okay. though. All right, I, I'm gonna go for the. I'll go for the plant and try to free up spaces for you guys. So, I need to spend four crystals total to get two more attack because of the bonus from the oh, event card. Cool. Yeah, and uh, so I could do four damage to the boss, but I guess I'll keep him for an extra attack for now. Stat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he does do f uh, five more wounds to me. So what are we up to total wounds? That's 17 different. and 8? 22. We have 30 total wounds. Oh. But now there are some easy guys to kill for a little How bit. How can so you heal? Help. I have to heal. How can you heal, Mike? Oh, no. I have to rest. You can't kill this guy? He has four wounds, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. I can kill him. I can't. Oh, that's right. Oh, no. I can't. No, I can't. Oh, you have four. three crystals. So or he... you don't have three crystals. Oh, I don't. Uh, that's for my rest. Oh, shoot. Okay. All right. So uh, you have to spend three or he attacks you, Jerry. So you have to spend the three you just got or he attacks you. I guess. All right. This yeah, is much boss better is not nearly as game, bad if we can get any defense. Like, this is this horrific. Really so bad what's market. this? This is a much better competitive game, by the way. Well, yeah, so we'll, we can talk about that in a minute. Um, what what do you ask so me? So this symbol on the bottom? Oh, there was like stuff that gives you plus one victory point for each of these. It, it, it only keys off of other okay. things. Yeah, like it is like for example, the ghoul is worth one victory point for each of those well, you have. I cannot anywhere. kill him. So. <laughs> All right, we're, def we're definitely about to lose again. I'm going to take fine. three I mean, and just we'll, give we'll... it back to him. That's fine. It is what it is, right? Oh, okay. So. That's true. I guess we can just kind of self survive until we can get some more okay defense. get a new card because that card was crap. um was when do we uh, get more fire by item, the way bury an item an enchantment or an enemy or the boss heals for two actually i don't mind uh, that at all i'll bury my warhammer oh wait no um i'll bury my uh, of challenge because it doesn't actually do anything for me Oh, does it even go under your starting card? Yep. Yeah, Barry means it becomes the new uh, bottommost card. Okay. Um, I could kill the ghoul, but I'd get hurt again, so... Or I can kill the serpent fly and also get hurt, but less. <laughs> <laughs> but also get hurt, but less. All right, so I have... Three attacks. Still. Oh, yeah. My stats did not change at all. Oh, you don't have any wounds, Peter? So maybe... I have no wounds. Last right, game, I, I took all the wounds. Since I have this game, I have none of the of wounds. Right, so I kill this guy. Um, I can remove him from the game, the Journey of the Graveyard, or I can just do one damage with him. I take I'm at 25 wounds. This would be great. <laughs> so we have three more? Yep. Well, here's here's a shield. Yeah, I'm resting. Oh crap! Really, Jerry? Well, for nothing, oh, wait, you can, right? You can kill yep. that guy, Jerry. Can you easily kill that guy? You take a single damage. No, I take no damage. Yeah. So yeah, that didn't make sense yeah. to rest. All right, so I kill him. All right. So you do three damage, or are you gonna hold on to it for plus three attack later? Let's hold on to it. 
Okay, so you do have minus yeah. one to your normal attack right now. All right, I'm definitely taking the shield, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, I got a shield. Oh, when transferring, Wait. you transfer an additional wound. But then we don't have enough money to do the other thing that he does. Um, so I can kill the skeleton. Ah, I'm still going to take one damage there, right? Mine says discard a, a monster to heal to you. I assume that's only to me. I couldn't heal like Mike. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. I, I can use my uh, ability, so I can kill this guy. All right, so I'm going to kill the skeleton. Um... And I'll unbury my uh, my banner, so it goes to the top. And I still have uh, enough attack to get plus two defense, so I take no damage from him. Um, fortunately, these guys are in the wrong order. Well, there are other things that let you switch the order, right? Yeah, but for now, I'll just keep him because he lets me do stuff with uh, the cards in the uh, track. All right, so I'm good. Jerry, are you getting the shield? Or the... Okay. So there's no way I can kill this dude. So I guess I rest him off of the board? Yep. Are you taking... You spent taking and losing three again? I mean, yeah. Just hit the rest button. Oh, yeah. Good call. All right. Uh, no, um... hold on. Next card. Next card. Oh, yeah. Good call. Okay, we gotta pay a total of uh, three gems. I can pay one. Uh, we can't pay a total of three. We don't have three. Oh, then we need. It. Okay, well then I'm pretty sure we're gonna be dead. The attack person with the lowest defense. Ye for one, seven. one. How what's your defense? Zero. So he attacks me and we lose. No, no, but you have, have a gem to use your special power, right? No, it's not a gem. I have to unbury the card, and it's it's currently on top, so I can't unbury it. Ah. So you take seven? Yep. Yep. So you took 32. Yep. I took uh, zero. I was, a, I was a good team player this time. Yeah, last time you chickened out for eight damage. This time you took nine, 32. <laughs> All right. So that's interesting. Um, I like this game a lot competitively. I I'm sure there's a way to beat it, but it didn't look possible today. <laughs> well, so, so it's funny. So here's the thing. I had not played with three or four players. And I was thinking, I think this is going to have some bad balance with three or four. With with two players, all my games have been tight, but winnable. Because you're, you're pulling up faster, you know? Like, we're, you're getting more items right off the bat. And you're getting, like, more things for yourself. Um... But yeah, so with three players, this is very rough. I mean, I, I thought I was picking an easier boss, and this guy is, in some ways, just as hard as the other guy. Um, if we can't get defense. If we had gotten, like, you know, a bunch of good defense items right, th right off the bat, he'd be nothing. Like, well, it depends what second. sets you pick, right, also. Because right. the set I picked, apparent, the three sets I picked apparently did not have defense. Yeah, well, and, and this and this is the thing that, like, when every set has defense, it's swinginess. Um, pretty much every set has an equal amount of attack and defense, Peter. Okay. Um, and I'm an equal seeing. number of monsters that need both. There's, there was one. There was well, yeah, one. But those are monsters you have to kill to get it. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it counts. That's, that's uh, defense. Plus four against, what? Oh, undead guys? That's pretty good. That's real good. Yeah, so, so this will be in my review, so, you know, stay tuned. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the big thing is that it's swingy, because if, like, a lot of monsters come out, because you just shuffle everything together, then it's rough. If a lot of items come out, then it's easier. Um, and I don't think it's great for player balance. That being said, I still really like the game, and for solo and two-player, it's a lot of fun. And for competitive, it's fun with all the way up to four. So, yeah, like, I'm, I'm kind of giving away some of my review here, but... Uh, the only way I wouldn't recommend playing the game from what I played so far is literally what we just did. Three to four player co-op is the one bad way to play the game. And, and really, in the end, competitive is always going to be better because whatever comes out randomly, you all deal with. You know what I mean? Whereas in co-op, whatever comes out is going to determine whether you win or lose. So it's uh, kind of weird. Anyway, I bet, I, there's I, my... better, I bet there's better ways to play, though. I bet we did not do some things. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. 
I, I still enjoyed it. I, I feel like there's a learning curve, and I feel like we could do better. Well, we, we probably should have slow played and not dueled the boss and not taken, like, 20 wounds on our own. You know what I mean? Because then yeah, we could have gotten You're the only one who had 20 wounds. Well, yes. I, I probably should have slow played the boss. and. Well, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, you were like, slow play, slow play. I, I slow played. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta, guys, I got to go. My son's awake. All right. But... Yeah, yeah, good. All Thanks right. for hanging out, Mike. Um, Hi, everybody. So, Jerry, I mean, obviously, you didn't enjoy your time here. Um, you have any other thoughts? I, I really liked it as a competitive game. Uh, I would go so far as to say it sucks as a three-player co-op. Really? Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like I had a, any real agency in this game whatsoever. I mean... I did feel like we were just taking the free stuff every time, which makes exactly. sense, right? Like, there, well, there, because we had to keep don't... spending all our crystals to prevent the damage, so we didn't lose immediately. Right. I mean, there was no choices. It was, nah. Well, I mean, even with the first boss, I felt like it was obvious that we were going to do that until we built up. So I think each boss is going to have their own strategy. I think this one you do early on. You get rid of any bad enemies that are in the zero spot. You just keep your crystals as long as you can. You keep you know, throwing those enemies away and getting all the good stuff till you build up to the point where you can fight. You know what I mean? So I feel like there was a better strategy against him that we did. Well, for use. all the interesting stuff that we had and when we played competitively, this took it, that away. It, it's not as interesting. That is for darn sure. That is for darn sure. Ooh, nine victory point dragon over here. Of course he, ah, he only needed seven attack. We could have killed him. If he would have come out, that would have been nine more life gone. I don't know. I think there yeah, is I mean, an interesting Maybe game different here. bosses made it better, but we played two bosses and they... I don't know. This was... This is a co uh, competitive game that they tried to shoehorn co-op in. Yes. I mean, you've talked about that before and it, it's not working for me. I would like to play it more, honestly. And I know I'm not going to get to play it more because you guys don't like it. Well, you don't like it. So maybe Mike and I play uh, two-player, which he says is better anyway, uh, which I could see. There's so many better games to spend your time on, though. I know. I just I like what we're doing in this game, but I agree that yeah, the choices... Yeah, and play it competitively, or it's actually fun. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, I had a lot of fun when we played it competitively. Yes. And that was four-player, right? Touche. Touche. So I assume you're done for the night. And if you're not, did you want to play Keyforge Adventures? Did you want to? Nah, it's one o'clock. I'm done. You're done? Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, all right. Let's see. Indie Boards and Cards. Who makes Aeons And You were talking about earlier. Was the only game I backed in 2020 and received it on time. Um, cool. Great info, guys. Uh, Actually, sorry. Cards Against Humanity was a Kickstarter game. I backed the original Kickstarter for was that. Was that Indie Boards and Cards, though? No, that was not Indie Boards and Cards. No, no, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Buha, I never got an answer were... from Mike. Yeah. No, he did answer. He said he does like the... Uh... Oh, he missed it. Dan missed it. All right, well, Dan, you're on the, uh, the Slack, right? Or Discord. I'm sorry, we're on Discord now. We're no longer on Slack. You're on the Discord, right? And if you're not... Look for the Discord you're in not, the you're show not on notes. Slack anymore? No, we're not on Slack anymore. We're done. Uh, I mean, it's too hard to, to follow both. So, Dan, if you're not, I think you are, but if you're not already joining the Discord, check the comments or show notes or whatever it's called here, either for here or any of the podcasts. They all have it. Um, how to get on the Slack or the Discord. Join the Discord and ask Mike directly there. He'll answer any questions. Mike's on there constantly. In fact, when you hear him typing when he's playing games here, that's why, because he's usually yes. answering questions on the Discord while he's trying to play games with us. Uh, and he's the one who runs the games too, so he's like quadruple tasking usually when he's running things. Oh, Gloomhaven um, was a Kickstarter. Yeah. Forgot what, about that. What are you guys talking about Kickstarter? Like, what am I missing? Why are you talking about behind. things that are Kickstarter starters? Are, he, so, said he, he said he uh, said he said he uh, said mixed results so far with Kickstarter games. Well, that's true with any game, right? Like, here's the thing: people blame it on Kickstarters, and they say there's lack of development and this and that and whatever else. I mean, that's true of that's every true. single game that's out there. Like, just because a publisher publishes it versus somebody independently publishing it does not matter. I mean, it does, 
but you don't know the people in charge of any of these places. I'll tell you from working with some of these bigger... Um, oh, I'm Peter, by the way, not Mike. Um, <laughs> Mike's the one who had no uh, <laughs> no video. So, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. For me, unless it's a big publisher, and, and big publishers questionable too right like we've worked with a lot of publishers now even though we don't have a lot of games published we've worked with them on just helping them develop stuff or, or working with them through the youtube channel or whatever else and i'll tell you most of them are small fry small potato companies anyway they're mostly one to five people so i don't know that those one to five people can do any better than somebody kick starting for themselves yeah they I mean, have duds too yeah so i mean i think that that question of kickstarter versus non-kickstarter is kind of a dead issue now like, there are great games that come out of Kickstarter. There are terrible games that come out of Kickstarter. There are great games that come out of retail. There's terrible games that come out of retail. So, I don't know. For me, I don't think it matters. I'm not going to judge whether something's Kickstarter or not whether when I'm deciding whether I want to buy it or not. It's what well, do I know about I mean, the game itself. I will say one of the things on Kickstarter that you should be a little bit worried about is uh, stretch goals and expansion content that has just seemingly been thrown in there and not properly play tested. That's something you rarely get from actual publishers uh, that you get from Kickstarters all the time. I mean, I'm going to bring up a plaid hat game, city of remnants. Remember that playthrough? <laughs> no city of remnants. Wasn't one of the, the no, prop, remember they it? had the infinite loop that came out right when the game came out. Oh, that's right. That was the one that had the infinite loop. Yeah. yeah so, no, that oh, happens. God, that was terrible. That happens. Well, I mean, it happens that the slowest person in our game group was playing that class as well and took 20 minutes per turn and had an infinite loop. Yes, that was terrible, uh, <laughs> granted. But no, for me, like, stuff slips through. It's going to slip through Kickstarter. I do agree with you. It is much more likely that stretch goals, Kickstarter expansions, whatever else are going to be less play tested. But then you look at, like, Marvel United, right, which just came out with, like, 50 million expansions first of all you know they planned those ahead of time there is zero way that they <laughs> like didn't have all that planned out ahead of time but the second part about it is like they took the time and took an extra year to send you that stuff right i trust it more when that's the situation if they like yeah, but that game is so simple i mean pfft. anyway don't get me started on marvel united well we've only played the base game to be fair and a lot of people are liking it with the expansions which changed things up. So, I mean, I'm not I'm not ready to judge Marvel United because there are too many people saying that it's a good game for me to disagree. You know what I mean? Yeah, having, I know what you mean, but... Having only played anyway. the base game. Like, I'll happily disagree if I played, you know, all this stuff. They're like, oh, well, this game's great. They have the one on Kickstarter now, the X-Men one, and I saw some of the cards that they were... And they looked the same as the other cards, so, meh. Yeah. Yeah. If you like chibi minis, it's it's great. Yeah, I mean, if you want to paint 10 million minis, it's great, too. Or yeah, just have a TV version of uh, Wolverine and Gambit. Nice, nice. Yeah, no, that game lost me when it went to, like, two or $300. I'm like, wait a minute. This is a family oh, it's, game. It's, it's that, above there, there now. Yeah, that's like, well, yeah, because now you've got a whole second set of $300 stuff to buy. Oh, so, no, the second set's, like, at 400 I think. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. That, that was a problem for me. I bought 30 buck buck game at Walmart, and to some degree, there's a little bit of regret there because the $30 game by itself isn't good enough. Um, now, for 30 bucks, like I'll paint up the miniatures and have a good time, but whatever. All right, we're, we're getting into all kinds of stuff today. We're all over the place. What I tell you is a good game, and go watch my playthrough of it if you have any interest in Keyforge at all, is Keyforge Adventures I had a blast with. Uh, Play it one to three players. They said more than that, it takes too long. I We have a review coming up. Actually, I got to edit the podcast as soon as we get off here. So it'll be up by tomorrow morning when you wake up. Um, I will be done editing that podcast. So I interviewed the designer of the first Keyforge adventure, the Key Rackin, Rise of the Key Rackin, I think is what it's called, uh, that just came out. The name is stupid, Key Rackin. Don't go with that. <laughs> Don't worry about that part. The game itself is a lot of fun. If you own no Keyforge, first of all, for 10 bucks, you can buy a deck. But second of all, not only is the expansion print and play, but the, um, so you can play cooperatively, but also they have plenty of decks, like 10, 12 decks that are print and play as well. So you can print off decks off the internet and play it as well. So 
I love Keyforge, one of my top games of all time, and the adventure mode is really fun. Now, does it have infinite replayability? No. I can't wait for the second mission to come out already, but I've had fun with it the few times I've played it already. Uh, one of them was on the stream with my son, so you can uh, go back and watch that. Uh, so, Beneclef says, Peter, I rolled the same way with Tainted Grail, though, and, uh, and I was disappointed. <sighs> Tainted Grail was a lot of fun the first few times, and then it got grindy the same way Seventh Continent did for me. <laughs> Let's not get into Seventh Continent for you. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, we've talked about it enough on the podcasts and other places as well. So, just advice uh, for everybody: look on the back of the cards. Yes, for all games, true. really. Yes. <laughs> Beneclef asks: <laughs> All KeyForge titles good? Question mark. So KeyForge is a head-to-head -head dueling game, and I would say, all, yeah, all, they're all good. But the thing about KeyForge is it's random decks, right? So you're buying something, and unlike Magic or one of those other games. You can't mess with your deck at all. Literally every deck has a unique name. So actually, I've got a deck right here. It's got unique artwork on the back. So this is Miss Flushin Mori uh, is the deck. It has a unique set of houses that are associated with it. And each of the three houses has 12 cards in it that are unique. Uh, or, or The cards themselves aren't unique, but it's a unique combination of those 12 cards. And then you have three different houses, each with 12 cards. You put them together and you play the game. So if you don't know how to play it, Watch my video. Do turn on Klingon subtitles. I made two rules mistakes there. One of them I corrected, but um, it's pretty good. But yeah, no, every deck is completely different. So this one is the founder of Aldapir Ossuary. So every deck is completely different. Every deck's 10 bucks also. So that's the great part about it. So you can go to the store, buy a $10 deck, and have fun with Keyforge. Um, yeah, Keyforge is pretty fun. Yeah, I like it a I lot. I mean, it sucks if you buy one deck and it's, and it's not good, but... You can buy a starter and get a couple decks, right? Yeah, the starter comes with two decks, a play mat. I would definitely recommend that. If you have somebody else to play with, I would definitely recommend getting a starter. It's got the rule book. It's got all the tokens. It's like 25 bucks. Literally, it's five extra do dollars. I buy a starter for every set anyway because uh, I want the play mats because every starter, it, they're paper play mats. Don't get me wrong. Well, and sometimes they come out with new tokens. They do have new tokens sometimes. Um, but yeah, so it's two decks they're 10 bucks each um and then you get all the tokens and two play mats i like collect the play mats i don't know why am i ever going to use them i do use them actually when i teach new players i'm like which picture do you like they all have different pictures but i do think the play mat tells you kind of where to put stuff and i actually think it's pretty good for keyforge so i recommend a starter uh if you're getting into it um but i would say keyforge adventures go ahead and try it um you know everything is print and play now i know print and play is a pain in the butt um, I did upload everything to Tabletop Simulator for my own personal use. Uh, I have not made that public. I don't know why. Maybe I will at some point. Um, so if people are interested in trying it, uh, I actually did put a link in the Discord for people to use the one that I uploaded. Um, but yes, I scanned every single card and uploaded them. Um, it's only 45 cards, so that wasn't too bad. So if you're comfortable with TTS, there is a link in the Discord under Keyford Adventures. Um, so, but I, I didn't make it public yet, but there is a link in the Discord. But anyway, man, we have been on a while tonight. We've talked a lot, which is great. Yep. Um, thank you to everybody who's participated in the chat tonight. And uh, no, it, it's been really fun. This is why we do this. We love the interaction. That's why we started the stream channel. Our main channel, uh, you know, <laughs> is, is what it is, right? It is you know great gameplays you're going to get the rules concise you're not going to get all this banter you know some people love that this channel is really meant for this kind of interaction this kind of banter and a lot more cooperative play you know the main channel does a lot of solo plays we do a lot of cooperative plays over here they're both great uh for different reasons so that's why we have both of the channels uh and the podcast too i mean if you like podcasts um, we've been doing it for four years. There's over 200 episodes. We don't expect you to catch up on all of them, but, uh, yeah, no, we've had a lot of fun with it. And Jerry. And this is the only place you get me. And this is the only place. No, no, you've been on some podcasts, man. Uh, I have been on podcasts. Cool. Especially like post convention podcasts. So, you know, we're going to PAX this year. Yeah. So I can rail about certain publishers. <laughs> yeah. You're going to, you're going to be on the PAX one this year. I guarantee we're going to PAX this year. Um, yeah, I got to get my rants out. Yeah. 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 All right, Jerry. Well, thanks as always, man. It's all been right. great. Good night, all. All right. Talk to you soon.
Bye.